first thing to do, run your headlights for a few minutes. Then leave the car with all the doors shut and the ignition off and all electrics turned off and leave it like that for at least 10 minutes. Gives the electronic modules in the car a chance to wind down and go into a sort of semi-awake mode. Make sure too that you know which is the positive and which is the negative of your battery. If you've got a sealed battery then you'll have a big sticker covering these ports. You saw you'll see you'll see a sealed battery in a few moments. But if you've not got a sealed battery remove all the ports. You'll need a big flat screwdriver for this. Now if you look down into each port you'll be able to see the electrolyte, the battery fluid covering the plates. The fluid must be at least half a centimetre above the plates. Some batteries, you can see this one does, have an indicator for the correct level of fluid. If you do find you need to top up a cell or two, get yourself some deionized water. You also need to set your meter to the correct scale. Volts DC and you'll see that I've set it to the 20 volt scale. We're looking to take readings up to around 14 or so volts. Don't set it to that scale, that's volts AC. Turn your meter on using the on off switch. Different meters will have a different on off switch. Some, some you turn off on the, using the dial. They have an off position on the dial. So remember that at the end. So, test one, state of charge. Connect to the battery. So negative connected, positive connected. You'll see that my battery here is measuring 12.7. That means that it's fully charged. If it was showing down around 12.45 or less, 12.45 is about 75% charged. I'll flash up on the screen in a moment a little table that shows the voltage versus the state of charge. You can pause and read it. If your battery is showing 12.4 volts or less that means it's 70% charged or less and therefore your battery will need to be charged the battery will give of its best when it's at least 70% charged all of the time if a battery is allowed to discharge regularly or consistently then a, a sort of memory effect takes place and the battery will deteriorate inside it'll reach a point where it won't take much charge anymore and then come a winter you'll find the battery will die because of the cold and the strain that's put on it due to uh, due to starting an engine in the winter here I've got a spare battery you can see on the top of it the markings for the plus and minus bit more clearly because it's not in a car you can also see that because I've left it sitting in my garage for nearly two years it's only got 12.04 volts that means it's in quite a poor state of charge but all you need to do here with the battery open just dip, dip your probe into the acid Positive connects to the positive of the battery, dip your probe in, just into the acid, you'll see on the first one straight away just under 2 volts. Move on to the second one, 4 volts. Just over 6 volts. 8 and a quarter. 10.4. You're looking for the voltage to go up at 2 volts per cell, approximately. 
if it doesn't go up by two volts per cell if one cell only goes up by one volt or even less then that tells you that that cell is down on charge and it's probably failing in that one cell the caps back on all of the cells now before moving on to test 2 if your battery is in 75% charge or less you must charge it up test 2 should only ever be carried out on a fully charged battery so if your battery needs charging now is the time to do it now for test 2 we're going to crank the car to put a load on the battery if you took the car to an auto shop they would use a proper load tester whereby they would put a specified load on the battery for a specified period of time measuring the voltage at home you haven't got that equipment so the easiest way to do it is by cranking the engine over and seeing what the voltage is during the cranking test now you need to make sure that your car cannot start while you're testing this while you're cranking it over you don't want it to start the easiest way to do that on a modern car is to simply disconnect the harness that runs the injectors in my case there's a connector just down here below the dipstick and below the throttle body that I can pull the easiest way to find that I, I've, got, I've got the wiring diagrams for this car but if you follow the wiring from the injectors it'll come back to a connector and you should be able to disconnect the injectors so now we can turn the engine over without it starting now we're going to crank the engine over for around 20 seconds I would suggest you get an assistant to do this for you but I'm going to do it myself so you could see my battery only got down to about 10.95 volts after 30 seconds of cranking if after 30 seconds of cranking your battery is getting down to 10 volts or less certainly if it's getting down to nine and a half volts then then your battery is weak and it's getting towards time for replacement a good battery should be able to maintain at least 10 volts for about a minute's cranking we're not going to do a minute's cranking because that will get the uh, starter motor warm and could do some damage this particular car as it happens has got some kind of timer in the ECU and it won't allow you to crank the starter motor over for that long don't forget after you've done your load test that you need to reconnect your injectors having reconnected the injectors we're now going to move on to test 3 which is to test the charging system so first of all we'll start the engine and let it idle with no load, no electrical equipment switched on at all. If the charging voltage drops below 14, then your alternator is starting to become weak. Anything below 13.8, and it won't be able to charge the battery effectively during any journeys. I've now loaded the alternator with around 65 amps. Both heated front seats are on, full power, the heated rear window is on, the lights are on, full beam, front and rear fog lights are on. I'm pulling around about 70 amps in total, 65 to 70 amps at the moment, at natural idle. But you can see that that's caused the battery voltage to drop quite considerably. It got as low as 133 Although it, ten, although it seems to be maintaining about 13 and a half most of the time. That's just about okay. I have got the battery, ex, battery and alternator extremely well loaded. I've knocked off the main beam. I've also knocked off the fog lights front and rear. And it's now up to about 14.2 volts. Which is perfectly adequate. It's now running the heated rear window, both front seats and the dip beam lights. It's a shade on the low side if you load it up fully, but that's not a surprise in this car. This car's done 100,000 miles, so it wouldn't surprise me that the brushes in the alternator are just a little bit worn. We've put the battery under a fair bit of strain today by doing what we've done to it. 
So I'm going to put it back on charge. And most people will tell you that you need to disconnect your battery from the car in order to charge it up. If your car's a little older like this one, this one goes back to 07, then probably not necessary. But some modern cars have smart charging systems and you really do need to disconnect the battery in those instances.